Well, happy holidays, everyone. This is Sony Artisan and Sing Ray Ambassador Don Smith, and I would like to welcome you to December's tip of the month. I'm recording this during the week between Christmas and New Year's, but it's going to be released on New Year's Eve day. And I just hope all of you have had a fantastic Christmas. And um, if you are listening to this on New Year's uh, Eve day, <laughs> that you have a fantastic New Year's tonight. Uh, Barry and I haven't decided what we're going to do for New Year's yet, but I think we're going to some neighbors, friends of ours for a dinner and celebrate New Year's with some of our good friends that we've made here in our new town of Morro Bay. Today, I would like to talk to you about focus stacking. Yes, uh, for those of you who have taken workshops with me and know a little bit about me, you're, you're probably shocked because you say, gosh, Don, you never really liked focus stacking. And um, the answer to that is I have an interest in it, but about 10 to 12 years ago, I was sent a uh, a actual, the first focus stacking device that was going to be mass produced to the photographic world. And it was from a company out of Dallas. I'm going to keep their name quiet because they never did release the product from what I understood. It was very cool. Back then I was, uh, this was before Sony ever even thought about making cameras. And I was shooting with a Canon and I can remember I went over to a place near Monterey that had a field of lupin, just beautiful lupin, and uh, set up with a 70 to 200 and popped it into my hot shoe. It, it kind of looked like a lightning trigger, if you're familiar with those. And uh, I, I just tapped in the, you had to enter a few things, and one of it was, what's the nearest thing you want in focus? And... I made my best guesstimate and put that in, and then uh, I just put infinity for what's the furthest thing away you would want for focus. And then I tripped the shutter, and it just took off and did its thing. And back then, the only software that I was aware of uh, that would put these images together, and it's a software that I still own today, and I'm going to show it to you in this video, is Helicon Focus. Great piece of software for focus stacking. With that device, there were no skips. Uh, I tried it with that device, and I tried it doing it manually by hand, and I think I skipped two or three sections where um, I didn't quite get the focus right. So you would start out with a very sharply focused photo, about a third of the way into the frame, there was a band of softness. That's where I missed the focus, and it continued on and so forth and so forth. So it looked really weird. Well, uh, up to this point, that was how I had to do my focus stacking. I had to guess, and I know a lot of you have had to guess. Um, Canon and Nikon were the first on board with focus stacking. Uh, I kept uh, talking to the powers that be at Sony very much about uh, getting it into our cameras. And when I got back from Monument Valley uh, about a week or so ago, uh, there was my new A7R5 with focus stacking, and I was so excited to go try it. Um, there's a lot of good things about that camera that I'll get into in another video, but it was really the focus stacking I wanted to try. So I went um, to the uh, Pismo Beach Caves. For those of you who are familiar with the area, for those of you who are not, if you're on 101 coming south through San Luis Obispo, California, when the 101 brings you back out to the... Um, the highway swings back out to the Pacific Ocean. Uh, that's Pismo Beach area. It's Grover Beach, Pismo Beach. Um, and there is a section you can get to where these real cool caves. And as you can see here, these white ash rock. This was caused with uh, volcanic ash that hardened uh, over time. So you can see I've color-coded here in Lightroom uh, this is the way I do it. This might be really old-fashioned. 
and Sony does allow you to create a folder for your stacked images. And you can see what I love about Sony, and this is what, one of the things I pushed very hard for, and I know other photographers did also, was uh, I didn't really care that the camera was going to generate a stacked JPEG for me. I wanted access to the RAW files so I could come in to Helicon Focus and or to Photoshop. And I'm going to show you both ways how I did this. So the first section of photos here I've color coded. I think there's 10 of them here or um, and focus from front to back. I'll blow these up in a moment. And then we have two, four, six, seven uh, of another section with some uh, green algae growing on some of the darker colored rocks here, the stained rocks. And uh, I'll show you how I did that and how you should do it in Photoshop. So you can come away and make kind of your own decision. Um, the one thing I really have realized uh, about the Sony, and I've tried it now on a couple different occasions so far, I really only have had the camera for a little over a week and have already been out for two shoots. But it will, uh, here I started focusing uh, this is for the it looks like the back focused and I'm just going to keep tapping 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 Actually, it was the front focused all the way to the back So now we're at the back and I'll keep backing up and we'll come to the front So you set up the camera and I, I can't talk to Nikon or Canon because I don't use their cameras anymore but uh, with Sony you go into focus stacking uh, I recommend you, you can put a limit on how many frames you would want it to stack. I think I just put mine at like 150 or something crazy number like that. I know I would never go over that. And um, I just, all I have to do is just set the foreground frame and then it will uh, determine where infinity is and it'll stop. So if it, if it takes 10 frames, it'll do that, 20 frames. Heck, if it took uh, 150 frames, I could do that. And I can raise that number. I can't remember what you can go up to. I believe it's something like 200. It's some crazy, crazy number. So um, let's take a look at these 10 images. And what I'm going to do, I'm just shift clicking here. And I'm going to right click. Again, I'm in Lightroom Classic. And we are going to go to Export, which is down here and I'm gonna find Helicon Focus, and I'm gonna click. Um, you cannot take a raw file directly into Helicon Focus, so these are gonna convert out to TIFF. Uh, I did just put the uh, Adobe DNG converter on there, but I'm gonna to have to call the company uh, because I do believe I can bring them in as DNGs. To me, I do no processing on the front end, I just uh, throw them in here, and what we're going to do is stack them, and then I'm going to go back into Lightroom and treat it as a regular frame. So here you can see the background is nice and sharp. Foreground is not sharp, but that's because we haven't rendered it. Before we get going, I want you to look over here on the bottom right where I'm moving my cursor. The best, best method that I have found and the recommended method for doing this is method B, depth map. Then your radius, um, I have found that if I use between two to four, that's usually pretty good. On the smoothing, I found if I've used between roughly two to six, that is pretty good. The only time I've ever really had to go in and kind of move those around is if I have foliage that's blowing. And I'll show you uh, a way that you can deal with that. I don't have any bl uh, blowing foliage, but I'll sort of explain it as we go along here. So uh, up on top here, you have some um, tabs. Mine is saying trial, 29 days left, because I had to upgrade this software. I haven't used it in quite a while. And uh, anyway, I, I had to upgrade for, uh, I just bought a, purchased a new Mac Studio, and so I took my old version off, put the brand new one on there. I just haven't put my license in there. If you're going to purchase Helicon Focus, they do offer a lifetime license. You do want to get the pro version. Don't get like the light versions or anything like that. If you're going to do this, do it the right way. 
So I'm going to come over to retouching, and there's nothing I can retouch because a uh, stack needs to be rendered, and it's asking, do I want to render it now? And I'm saying yes. There's also in the bottom right a render button. I can go either way. And let's just, uh, you can see the bitmap now picking portions of every frame. It's picking the sharp portions, and there we go. We have, um, we've gone from this, you can see how soft it is, to this, how nice and sharp it is. Now, uh, there's different ways you can view this. I've got it set up side by side. You can go top and bottom. That's all pretty standard. Um, but I wanted to show you, if I went back to retouching, I had mentioned this a little earlier. Let's just say I had a little blowing flower here or something. I would, the nice thing here is I could come through any frame and click and find where that, that flower is sharp. That frame would appear over here. And then right up here next to brush, I would pick the first one. When I hover over it, it says copy parts from source, source image to the resulting image. And I could just um, hover over the flower here and paint. And you can see when I'm hovering over, it's just this would be the blurred flower over here probably. So I would just paint on the blurred flower and it would pick up the sharp flower. So that's really it. That's how simple it is in Helicon Focus. Um, then when I'm ready to output, I would just go to, uh, to saving and I would click this button here, save. And let's let this open up very quickly because I wanted to show you something here. Okay, so you can see that it shows my radius. This is just a file number here. I could name it. And you can see here, uh, it's showing my radius and smoothing that I picked. That, that's a way to know that um, it's been stacked. I can erase all of this and just put Pismo Caves stacked, something like that and hit save, and I would usually just put it right back into my Lightroom folder and then go on in there and um, process the image just as a single file. And I would usually just choose TIFF, and that's it. So uh, that's how we do this. And let me hit exit in um, Helicon Focus. Okay. So now let's come down. There's what we say here. There's seven frames. This is just a different photo now. So there's my foreground. Look at how soft. This is actually really cool, these old steps. I went back and just made a photo just of these stair stairs that were cut in to this white um, uh, ash uh, again that's been compressed from the uh, back in the days when there were volcanoes. So I'm just going to tap through these seven frames. There's the foreground. There's number two, three, four. Watch the, the steps get more sharpened now. Five, six, seven. Okay. And now you see the foreground's out of focus. So let's get back in here. And again, I, I just use the old fashioned of putting my hand in front. And, and I do this on a number of things. When I'm doing a panel, I will do that. When I'm doing something I want to make an HDR frame out of, I will do that. It's just a reminder for me that, hey, um, these are going to be something you've done. Like I said, Sony has allowed you to create a folder, but from what I'm understanding, they're not the, the, the file names reset, so you're going to have duplicate files. I'm sure there's a way that Sony's going to change that up in firmware once they realize what they've done. But I, I wouldn't use that anyway because I like staying with what works for me. But you have to figure out what works for you. All right. This time, we're not going into Helicon Focus. We are going to come down here and uh, we're going to edit in. I don't want to edit straight into Adobe Photoshop 2023. I want to come all the way down here to the bottom and I want to open its layers in Photoshop. And I'll let this open up. This is a pretty fast computer I've got, but even then I'm opening up 61 meg raw files and I got to open up seven. Well, we'll just stick with it here. There's three of them already open, four. And uh, I'm going to show you here 
there's extra steps we're going to have to go through, and I, that should be it, uh, that Helicon Focus just does behind the scenes. And the first thing we've got to do, if I click through each one of these, you may see the frame. On this one, you don't see it shift so much. But if I was shooting out towards something, you would see the frame actually shifting a little bit. And that's just because when we're using, when we're focusing any lens, fixed focal length or, and or zoom, uh, as we focus, it kind of expands or contracts the photo a little bit. That's just called focus breathing. That's, uh, that's just a, a normal thing that happens when you do that. That's why we're going to have to do these extra steps to blend this all together. So I'm going to shift click, make sure I've got all the layers highlighted. I'm going to come up under edit and I'm going to go to auto align layers. You're going to get six choices here. Just leave it in the default auto. Click OK. And what this is going to do, it's going to compensate for the focus breathing that we really couldn't see when I was clicking through these, but I know as you guys get into this, you're gonna, you're gonna see it more and more. Now you may be looking at this and going, hey, those steps are still out of focus. Well, we haven't focus stacked yet. So two things I wanna do um, is I want to make a copy of these that are already aligned. So I'm gonna go Command J, and then I wanna put all of those in a group. So I'm gonna click Command G, and then I'm going to turn the eyeball off on the group. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I, I guess I'm still trained for the old days when I used to hand uh, guess at this. You know, I would just turn the lens and kind of guess at how many areas of focus I should be. If I missed a little zone, I would always have backup copy, copies that I could paint back in. And the way you would do that is you'd have to add a mask. So it's always the top layer that's going to affect anything else. Let's say it was coming from this layer. I had missed a little bit. I would come down to the bottom of the layer stack where this mask, where it says add a layer mask. And then I would option alt click on this little icon down here that says add a layer mask. And that puts it on and you're not going to see anything until you paint um, into it. And the way you would do that is come up here and make sure you have white on top and then go to your brush tool, B for brush, and then you could, uh, you could start painting through. I also want to look up here. You would want this opacity set to 100 and flow to 100, and you would just paint through. And now I can show you the mask that shows you it would be revealing what's inside of there. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to close this group up um, because with the camera doing the focus stacking, it's all math. So it's not going to miss a, uh, a zone of focus. That's one of the nice things about having this. All right. Now that these are all aligned, we're going to shift click. We're going to go back under edit and we're going to auto blend layers. So when this box comes up, you want to make sure you're clicked on the stacked images and then just click OK and we'll let Photoshop do its own thing. Keep your eye back here on these stairs because as that taskbar moves all the way across and completes, you're going to see those stairs get nice and sharp. And there you go. Okay, so now we are focus stacked and I can Command-Shift-E or... Um, yeah, Command Shift D, excuse me, and that will, you'll see it puts in a little merged. I can now delete, um, I'm just going to drag this to the trash because I wouldn't need that anymore. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to put flatten image. And now I can just go on through and I can process this image as if it was a single image coming out of my camera. You'll see the last thing you'll see is that you got a little bit of where because of the focus breathing didn't quite, uh, I mean, it aligned perfectly, but it left a little mark. Um, so I could come up here and click the crop tool and then make sure content aware is filled and then fill it in that way. Okay, so that is how we focus stack. Um, I think 
personally for me in 2023 moving forward with this A7R5 um, that I'm going to have a lot of fun trying to focus stack things. I can tell you from the experience I had with that device that was sent to me from Dallas uh, 10, 12 years ago, I didn't like the look if I was focus stacking something shot with a, like a telephoto, like a 70 to 200 or 100, 400. It, it, it just didn't look right to my eye. But if I'm using a wide angle and doing something near far, some beautiful flowers in the foreground, and or something like this, this was done with a 24105, probably at about 50 mil. Uh, it, it does look good to have everything razor sharp. Could I have gotten this at F16 or F22? Probably, probably most certainly, this, this scene. But now I don't have to worry about the fraction going up to F16, F22. Also, let's say there were some flowers growing here and there was a little breeze going on, which it was because just the camera left was the ocean. Um, I can get a little bit faster shutter speed now because I'm not up at 16, 22. And your lenses tend to perform best between F8 and F11. So another reason. So focus stacking, pretty cool. It is in the newer Nikons, it is in the newer Canons, and it is in, as of now, the Sony A7R5. And if you're on the fence about purchasing that camera, if you're a Sony user, I can tell you the file is incredible. I've already had people telling me, but yes, it's the same sensor as the A7R4. That's true, but coupled with a brand new processor that makes that sensor look and act as if it's on steroids. It's just producing a file where, uh, let's say this dark part of this, if, uh, well, let me just prove it to you. <laughs> if I was to, uh, let me add a little um, curves there. And if I was to go in here, come on, curves box, open up. I have something backing up in the background, and that's why this computer is acting slow. I'm, I'm just going to take this targeted adjustment tool. Let's drop it into the shadows. And look at what's back hiding in there in the shadows. I mean, that's what it should look like. Look at how much is in there. It's pretty incredible. So I'm finding this on more and more frames that I shoot that I can really, really expose for the highlights. And this is a nice, let's get a histogram up. This is a nicely exposed image. I mean, there you go, that's that. And these blacks would be recommend uh, right here where it's clipping a hair. But uh, I just follow the old axiom, expose for the highlights, process for the shadows with this camera. And it does a fantastic job. So anyway, that's it. I hope I've piqued your interest in focus stacking. Do you have to run out tomorrow and buy a brand new camera with focus stacking? Not at all. You can do this manually. Uh, just be careful because if you miss that zone of focus in one area, uh, you could have this picture looking razor sharp. Let's say we missed a, a section right in here it would go to softness. Uh, you could clone over by doing that, you know, where I showed you that you make a duplicate and uh, see if you happen to catch it in there. And if not, you'd be cloning in stuff in here to, to take that out. With a camera, it's all math. It's turning the lens for you. It's clicking. It, it takes all of that off the table for you. It's really a cool thing. And that's why I'm going to be utilizing it. So that's it. I hope you enjoy your New Year's. Stay safe out there. Drink responsibly, all that good stuff. <laughs> and um, I'm going to be uh, getting one more of these out to you guys in early January because on the 9th, we leave for almost a month in um, Iceland with Gary Hart doing back-to-back 10-day -back workshops and getting over there the flying time and having a couple of days off uh, on either end. It's, uh, it's going to be a good part of January, a good three, three and a half weeks, I think, um, before I even get back home. So I'll do up another one of these on another topic. And um, until then, keep getting out there and shooting you guys, and you take care.